Isn't that a pretty poster? Um, yes. One of the young engineers at scale made up this poster. <laughs> and I'm wondering if he flies, because he had the wrong power frequency. He had 126.7 at 127.6. So I used my Sharpie. Being, this is an experimental poster. <laughs> <laughs> so um, anyone that would like a poster, I have them. Also, um, Adam Birch, the engineer that will speak from Dan's aircraft, emailed me yesterday and said, could we put a picture of the RV-14 on the flyer instead of the RV-12? So I have both. I have an RV-14 and I have an RV-12. I just want to try to please everybody. But um, he wants to talk about the RV-14. But I told him there were some... Uh, people at the National Test Pilot School that are building an RV-12 and they're going to ask him some questions and he said, great, <laughs> he thinks that's fabulous. So he's a prototype engineer uh, assisting in the design and construction of new aircraft components at Vans Aircraft. So I think this is going to be a really exciting uh, experimental fly-in. And I've already had uh, emails from the people at Lance Air. And so they're going to bring some airplanes as well. And last year, when uh, <coughs> someone couldn't make it, uh, it was the Lance Air folks that uh, gave a great talk. So they just carry around their little thumb darts. Oh, yeah, well, I'll do a talk. And I thought, I love that attitude. So anyway, I hope you all can come on um, April 16th, playing crazy Saturday. And uh, I think there's going to be a lot of tables and and booths um, out there uh, on the patio area. And, and I told them, you know, you can set a table up next to your airplane if you want to. But don't be surprised if stuff blows away. You're going to have to anchor it down. So they're aware of that. So the 16th or the 23rd? The 16th. Did I say 23rd? No. Oh. <laughs> or, or are you just testing me? Yeah, it's April 16th from 10 to 2. But they'll be coming in uh, probably on Friday. Then Friday night at the uh, Stewart Event Center is the indoor fly-in. And that is so much fun. Just to go and watch is free. If you want to compete, I think it's $15. But um, I don't want to do that. But I want to watch all the kids from this high up to the big kids uh, fly their models and... and uh, Gliders, and of course Dan Craig always comes, and his stuff is fabulous. But there's going to be some quadcopters and stuff that out there too. I might have to saw a guy with a good sized quadcopter out in my neighborhood the other day. Uh, probably one of our neighbors. Uh, mm -hmm. my, might be, might be. Oh, in your yeah. neighborhood or my neighborhood? My, oh, my neighborhood. neighborhood, yeah. Did you get a box of drone shot? Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't care if they fly drones over my house. Matter of fact, the uh, um, that was a public record. Kathy didn't care. About. Yeah, <laughs> that's okay. Well, and, perhaps we can move the practice. <coughs> you can, you can, if you'd like to just fly between Bird's house and our house, it's fine. <laughs> no complaints. What time does that start? The uh, 10, the indoor. The indoor fly-in starts at 5 p.m. 5 p.m. and goes until 11. Past a lot of little ones' bedtimes, but uh, the big kids. They stay up late. <laughs> Thank you. So, yes, yeah. be sure and come and get some pictures. It's sure. It's just so neat to see those little kids. And I showed some pictures at Chamber, and there's one little boy, and he's throwing that glider, and he's up on his toes, and he's just putting his all into it. And I'm thinking, that's the future engineer. That's the future pilot. That's, you know, so yeah. it's it just picture is worth a thousand words. Anyway, thanks. Thank you. I can spare one of you. I have one item on the agenda here for a sublease agreement to be approved by the board. Um, this is not necessarily anything unusual, but uh, we have not been um, uh, doing these sublease agreements very consistently. So uh, council has actually redrafted a new sublease agreement which is attached here. So anytime a hangar owner uh, wants to sublease uh, uh, um, their space, according to their lease agreements, the sublease has to be approved by the board. So we're just bringing this to the board for approval. There's no reason that we wouldn't recommend it. Uh, it just does have to be approved in accordance with the lease agreement. 
So in order to sublease, they would have to sign the sublease agreement, which is, is attached, before we will grant them access to the gate. Okay, any board questions? Any public questions? Legal, does legal review this? Yeah, this is actually Scott's agreement that he drafted. And this is... So this is not actually the sublease, this is a... So it's really up to the landlord themselves to draft the sublease agreement with their own tenant. This is just a document that covers the district in the event that that subtenant is damaged. So it's, consent, it's our consent for that to sublease. Correct. Does this require a little help? Yep, everything does. Okay. Okay, we need a motion. By Director Evans, second by Director Ballantyne. All in favor? Why are we doing this by in their current lease? It just says they have to get the permission of the board, right? Correct. So why do we have a four-page document? Uh, we just need to have some kind of a contract so that the our tenant understands that they are taking the responsibility for that subtenant. It's not already in their in their lease. Not not spelled out like this. Um, the only thing that's in the lease agreement just simply says if you want to sublease your hangar, you have to get board approval. So isn't the answer to fix the lease, not to come up with a whole new document? You can do that moving forward. I don't say you can do that. Guys, typically we don't do that because it's coming to the board for approval, and if it's already in the lease agreement, then um, there wouldn't be separate documentation so we just do it so we have documentation that the original lease was approved, then we have documentation that the sublease was approved. Both those documents go in the uh, tenant file. Um, if a tenant needs to do a memorandum of lease, then they would have the appropriate documentation to do that memorandum of lease. It just it, it provides us with the documentation um, that the tenant has gone through the necessary steps. Okay, any other? And there's no new requirements in here? It looks to me like there's a couple new requirements. Council? Any new requirements, Council? I am uh, having to reboot my computer because it crashed. <laughs> so I don't is there something specific that you're referring to, Dr. Peterson? Well, I don't understand this whole insurance thing here. I'm going to read it. Um. What part is that? The insurance thing. A subtenant will either carry insurance policies, okay, fine, carried by the sublandlord. Who's the sublandlord? That's as per the language of the lease? They're a sub landlord? Yeah, and that's always the case in, in landlord tenants. Always become a sub landlord. Duncan and Ed linked about this in terms of whether we can require a sub tenant to uh, get a separate insurance policy. And basically, he's saying we can't require it, but our tenant can require it. So we're giving them an option, more or less. Um, that they can either choose to require their tenant to get insurance or that our tenant has to be, um, has to list them as additional insured. So the issue could be, let's say, um, it, this actually just happened. We, uh, we gave access to a subtenant um, and they damaged some district property. We have to make sure that the district is going to be covered in some fashion. So either that has to go through our tenant's insurance policy, or they have to make sure that their own subtenant has insurance coverage. Okay, all in favor? All in, uh, roll call. Director Valentine? Yes. Director Peterson? Nay. Uh, Director Deaver? Aye. Evans. Director Evans? Yes. Okay, motion carried. And posting and notice of vacancies.
We have received an official notification from Director Painter that she is resigning from the board effective immediately. That resignation is attached in your, in your packet, it's included in your packet. Um, the only thing that I wanted to make sure the board was aware is we have drafted a notice of vacancy. We just need direction from the board to post it. Uh, my understanding from, from Scott is that we don't need, uh, the board doesn't need to vote. We just need to get direction from the board to officially post this notice. Okay, any objection to posting the notice? Uh, the board give you direction on notification. Can't just the chairman of the board give you notice? Yeah, okay. Yeah. I just want to make sure everybody's on board with you. So, Director Evans, have you had a chance to review the notice of vacancy? So we'll go ahead so Jason has been with us now for three months as our director of technology. He's doing fabulous things already for us, helping us become much more efficient. And John Himes just started with us yesterday, in fact, as our new director of operations. So I just want to make sure the board and the press know we've got a couple new faces here. Just come from Wright Patterson Air Force Base, retired from the military, 28 years, Army, Navy, Air Force, um, background in aviation, uh, particularly air traffic control, air operations, uh, did some uh, uh, combat search and rescue stuff, so as well. Now I'm here, thank you. Thank you. Jason? Okay, so we've, we've done these car events here at the airport for, gosh, it's probably been 20 years. And oftentimes we do them twice a year. So the main organization that does these car events is called MKM. And they're, in fact, uh, they have an event planned for this weekend. So uh, I, I understood that we had approval uh, by the FAA. I assumed incorrectly that we had approval by the FAA to do these events. Well, they got wind of it, and they came across a flyer about these activities happening here, and they raised some concerns about having non-aviation activities, just in general, not necessarily the car activities, but non-aviation activities. There are a number of things that we do. Um, in addition to the car events, we have filming activities here, and this, um, you know, it's usually over $100,000 for a revenue stream for us every year to have these other non-aviation activities. So. We're working with them on, on uh, you know, addressing these concerns. The, the issue with the FAA is there's a lot of grant assurances, mm -hmm. and these grant assurances essentially state that if we accept federal money uh, to make runway improvements and that kind of thing, that uh, the infrastructure needs to be used for aviation purposes. The fact that we're actually making money on these events is, is a positive thing because we can apply that money toward maintenance and repairs, uh, which we do. We spend probably $100,000 a year in grant tracks yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so the revenue is nice for the airport, um, and it really helps in years where we're not getting a lot of FAA grant money, which we haven't for the last couple of years. So uh, they actually like that aspect, that we're making money on these events. So we're, we're, uh, we're addressing their concerns. We don't think that it's going to be an issue, but it is possible that at some point they come to us and say, you know, we're making complaints, which they haven't. They're just, they're uh, um, reading flyers that, that somebody's um, passing on to them. But if pilots start to complain about it, then there is a chance that we would have to just shut these activities down. What do the rules specifically state in this state that they provide a grant money to the community state that we must use these, um, these up, you know, the legal upgrades for runways and taxiways like that must, they must be used exclusively for aviation activities, or just for, or they, make, they have to be used for aviation activities. That's two different, that's two different things. So the, the language is not really that strict. It's, it doesn't necessarily say it has to be used exclusively for aviation activities. 
there is a little bit of a gray area, um, and that's why they're working with us on this. The fact that, that we're making money and we're telling them that the money, the revenue that we're generating from these activities, we're using to apply to infrastructure improvements for VA purposes. Um, I think you know we can easily justify it with that because that's an actual fact. Uh, so so they're um, they're coming around to that idea because of that. But um, if you're interested, I'm happy to send you the information we received from the FAA. Oh, I, I would be interested. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to address the board. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to appear when we get there. And I have a bunch of questions. Yeah, okay. Okay, Jason, would you like to tell us about yourself? Hi, Jason Buck. Um, resided in Kern County for 15 plus years. Um, been in technology for about 10 years. Started at the wind parks. Uh, been there for about six years. And then after that, I've done a lot of uh, local government agencies as a contractor. Um, started here, like Karina said, uh, three months ago. Good. Thank you. I'll vouch for you. I have a question. Uh, can you elaborate on item number one, please? The strategic plan? Mm -hmm. So I've, um, I've updated that. I sent it to David for review and, and for the direction if, um, if you want me to send it to the rest of the directors. And that was about a week ago, so you may not have had a chance to review any of that yet. But I'm, I'm happy to send it to the rest of the directors if that's the direction. Um, if we want to discuss it and put a closed session on the agenda, it's something that we should have to do that as well. I'm certainly, uh, I was certainly, as for me, I'm certainly okay with all the directors you see. review the pricing structure and the insurance assessment will really involve this, this uh, entire property list. So we're in the process of acquiring a property management software program that can integrate with our accounting system, which will make this a lot more efficient. It'll, it'll help us with tracking leases much better so we don't have to manually look them up. The biggest piece of this really is going to be the, the insurance risk assessment. And what we, we sat down with Duncan last month, and what we kind of determined as the, the course of events is We've got to update our property list at first because a lot of our property values are undervalued according to what's insured today, significantly undervalued. So I would expect that premium to possibly double, um, unfortunately. And then once we have that information back from Duncan in terms of new rates for, for the uh, properties, what Duncan is going to do is prioritize where he thinks we need additional insurance coverage. Uh, so there are a number of things that he recommended. And once we get that documented from him, I'll present that to the board with hopefully some tentative estimates, policy estimates. I'm not sure how much any of them are going to cost at this point. Um, and then we'll make a decision. Insurance is our biggest single expense, you know, aside from um, personnel. So I just want to make sure that um, we get all of the right information to the board. So my goal is to have it to the board no later than the second board meeting in May. So we can wrap this up, and, and any uh, impacts will be incorporated in the next budget year. Um, iterate to me how you're improving safety by trimming the whole in. <laughs> so in a lot of in a lot of areas, especially when you have blind curves, <coughs> it's really hard to see what's coming. So the bell shot is a big problem. The other big problem is. Uh, What's the name of the road we're north of Crown on? Pardon? Flight Systems. Flight Systems Drive. So it's right here. Um, when you come down Sabovich and you take this, this corner here, mm -hmm. these oleanders have been really tall. It's impossible to see around this corner. So there's a stop sign at the end of Sabovich here, but there is no stop sign on Flight Systems Drive to turn left. So when you're coming down this side, you're either to turn left or turn right. It's really hard to see. Mm -hmm. um, so those oleanders will trim way back. Notice a lot of them look pretty dry. 
Skippy. Yeah. Um, it didn't look like that until they were cut. That's just because it didn't No, but, but I, I, I don't know. Yeah. Typically, but some of them are dead. <coughs> a lot of them. Yeah, typically the season to, to do this kind of maintenance is, is November, December. So we just got, got these done really late this time around, unfortunately. But no, we're, we're confident they'll come back to life. Okay, board committees. Any committee uh, Kevin and Dave, um, and their engineer at AECOM, and uh, we verbally agreed uh, on what I sent to, to you and David uh, last week, mm -hmm. um, so I just need to finish drafting that, and we'll have that hopefully available for the entire board to review next meeting. Good. I think Dave was out of town He's last week, and that's why we're yeah. probably around this week. Yeah. Okay, uh, any directors have anything? Mm -hmm. That they had the kind of demand they had right away. Within six weeks, they had over 400 members. They had no idea that that many people would sign up so quickly. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, the good news is we were right. You know, Kevin Kevin was really pushing to get this fitness center here all along. Um, we didn't have a lot of data to back it up, but it just turns out that we were, we were right about it. So that's great, great news. I have that. a lot of friends, Karina, that go to that. Better, it's better like, to be lucky than yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, people really appreciate having it here. Okay, we uh, have a public comment on items not on the agenda. Members of the public. Well, uh, as a director of operations, I'll uh, I'll be uh, in, in charge of uh, ensuring the uh, the smooth and orderly uh, um, completion of the, of the air traffic control and airfield operations uh, or airfield management uh, environment and, and uh, uh, of the airfield here. So uh, I'm going to be. Uh, Karina's uh, right-hand person. So I see. At least I hope uh, that's uh, that's the plan so far. And, uh, well, it's kind of an exciting time to be out here. There's a lot of. It is a very exciting time. Fascinating. I'm excited about the mission. I'm excited about being here. The people are wonderful. Good. Uh, I, I could not feel more welcome. And uh, my family was visiting out here earlier, and they they made my family feel very welcome. So, okay. So, so uh, and and you're going to move here, I guess. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh huh. Good. Well. I'll put a a plug in for Rosemont. Yes, we sir. we have an airport there and nice schools. And I haven't made it to all the surrounding areas yet. Uh, you know, uh, as a, I've just come out here ahead of my family. So, oh, I see. Uh, once they get out here, then we'll. Yeah, let us know and uh, come out, and we'll show you our best shot. You know. Thank you, sir. Good. And